Okay, so now we are going to be working on our bracelet and necklace holder. And for this, I am using two Dollar Tree rolling pins. Now you can see that I've already completed the top and all I did was I used my white and brown acrylic craft paint and I applied it to the rolling pin just to give it more of a wood look, um, a log look. And, and then I ended up just wrapping some of that white rope again around both ends to make a really nice beachy effect. So what I did to, to get this look is I just took a napkin and I dabbed it in some white paint and then you just rub that onto your rolling pin. Next, I took my paintbrush, I dipped it in my brown paint, and then dipped that in some water, and then brushed that on top. And what happens is, wherever you applied your white paint, usually the brown won't really stick to that. It will go more so on the wooded part that you haven't painted, so it gives it a really nice um, double tone effect on the rolling pin. So you get some light brown, you get some darker brown, but you also get that light white beachy look. So I'm going to continue this until the rolling pin is completely covered with the paint and then I will show you how I put my white rope around both ends of the rolling pin. Okay, so I just take my E6000 glue and my hot glue and I apply it to the middle of the candle holder, that is the bottom, and then I place my rolling pin on top. I just measure both sides to make sure that it's centered and I let that dry. Okay, so now I have finished painting the rolling pin and I just love how it brings out the grain in the wood. When you do get these rolling pins, they are very, very flat. You can hardly see any grain in them. So by doing this technique with the paint, if you don't have any stain available, um, this is a great way of making the grain come out of the wood. Um, so I think it turned out great. Now, next I'm going to be showing you how I put this rope around the end of the rolling pin. Now what I did was I made four equal cuts of the rope. Now this rope here tends to fray because it is a little bit thicker. So all I did was at the end of the rope, I just applied some hot glue, waited for it to dry a little bit, not all the way, and then I just pressed my fingers together and twisted so that it would give a nice finish at the end of the rope. Now. Again, I cut four pieces exactly the same, so I already put three of them on. And all I did was I applied some hot glue to the back of the rope, just a little, to start it off. Now, I kind of want to keep them the same um, distance on each side from the edge of the rolling pin. So I'm just going to eyeball this. I didn't measure it, but you can and I'm going to lay it in the back of the rolling pin because we don't want to see that starting piece now once you press that firmly in place it sticks to it and you can continue wrapping and gluing the rope. And what I did was when I measured my rope, you can decide how many loops you want around the rolling pin. I decided three. So what I did was I roughly eyeballed 
you know, I started it in the back and then I took my rope, wrapped it around three times and figured out where it was going to finish because I wanted it to finish in the back so you wouldn't see it and then cut it there. This way you have a really nice clean looking fit finish from the front view. So then I just wrap underneath. Okay, so as you can see when I come up, I actually made it a little bit too long. So I'm just going to cut some off. And then I'm just going to take the end and as I said, just apply some glue. I'm just going to wait a few seconds because it is very hot to touch as soon as you apply it. So I'm just going to let that cool off a little bit. And then I just twist it around. And then I just apply some glue to the rope. And finish it like that. Okay, and so I just wanted to show you that I added some more rope to the top of the candle holder. Wrapped it around so that it butts up to the rolling pin. I just think that it gives it a nice crisper looking finish. I did it to the one in front as well but I did leave a little bit of the glass exposed only because this area as well as the top I will be placing some seashells in front of it so I figured it would be covered by the seashell anyway but that's just another little touch that I added to the piece to give it a nicer finish, a nicer look. Okay, so as you can see, I finished embellishing the jewelry stand with the seashells and I think it turned out wonderful. It looks so nautical, so beachy, exactly what I was going for. So now the next thing we're going to be working on is our top piece, which was actually the inspiration for this jewelry stand. There was a previous DIY that I had done. It was the Dollar Tree 2-in-1 farmhouse decor. And that actually was the video that um, my friend had watched and asked if I could incorporate something like that into a jewelry stand. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to wrap this dry floral foam in some jute twine. I decided to go with the jute twine just because I think the white would have been too much 
and so I want to add a little bit of the sandy brown color into this piece to go along with the rolling pins and this will sit at the very top of this rolling pin so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that I'm not going to show the process if you want to see how I did it you can go to that video that DIY that the inspiration came from I will post a link in the description box below and you could check that out if you want to see how I actually wrapped it I'm just gonna go ahead wrap it and then we will move on